Hello everyone and welcome to another build video. Another DPS set uh, which was originally buffed so now it's like really cool to play and really fun. Legendary works really well now. We're talking about this striker set today. Striker set got a really good buff actually. Um, some people say like it was a nerf but it's w way more than a buff. Um, so what striker was before uh, we had like less stacks and now we have more stacks and the stacks are basically the DK on the stacks is less lower now. Uh, before the 16.1, um, we had a title update 16 where they promised it to be like this now, but we actually had it like a little bit different. Uh, from 150 to 200, you lost five stacks per second. Uh, 100 to 150, you lost four stacks per second. Uh, 50 to 100, you lost like three stacks per second. And zero to 50, you lost two stacks per second. And now you actually is like totally different now. So if you go up to like 100 stacks, you basically lose only two stacks per second. So on the 50 to 100, if you go from 100 to uh, 200, which is actually coming from the chest here, yeah, you got like from 100 to 200 stacks, which is really cool. Uh, more stacks means more damage. You only lose three stacks now from 100 to 200. But it makes it really viable. Um, if you run a legendary house example and you have a really big field of enemies and you kill them all really quick, you gain your stacks all, all along. And if you then walk to the next area, to the next encounter with enemies, you basically maybe lose like half the stacks. So you go like to 100 stacks, which is still really good damage. And you can rebuild the stacks really quick with a shotgun. ACS 12 house example is really good for that still. Same as for Heartbreaker for the stacking part. So the way I run this set here is basically um, I run the chest and the backpack. So the chest is actually giving you another additional 100 stacks. So you go from 100 to 200. And the backpack increases the damage that you get from this set. It increases the, the gamble, the striker's gamble from 0 0.65 per stack to 1% per stack. So you gain 200% weapon damage in total if you run both the chest and the backpack. Uh, set work like this, you have weapon handling, 15%. Not the best buff. It's not the worst. Weapon handling means basically everything. Reload speed, accuracy, stability. So it's not a bad buff at all. But this is a buff you are up for here, like rate of fire, 15%. It feels really cool on this set. Um, and also the striker's gamble increases your weapon damage by 0 0.65 for each stack, stacking up to 100 times. And as you run the chest and the backpack, you have 200 stacks, and it brings it up to 1% per stack. And we are, like I said already, have one stack lost per second between 0 and 50, two stacks between 50 and 100, and we lose three stacks between 100 and 200. So it's consistent from 100 to 200. And the 50 to 100... You're basically always in that range. If you're out of fight, in between, like walking from uh, an encounter to the next encounter, you basically lose like lose everything above 100 stacks, but you still have like 100 stacks then still, which is really cool. And to regain that buff um, on this set here is actually pretty easy. Just run an ACS-12, like any fast shooting shotgun, and if you go like uh, really close to an enemy, which you normally have. You can also uh, use the assault rifle here, but it stacks very, uh, a lot lower. But if you use an ACS-12 here, I use the rock and roll here some, at the moment. You can see like how the stacks are going up at the bottom. And with one clip, I almost like full, so I can switch to assault rifle now and ring in the other stacks while I'm shooting the enemies. And look at the damage numbers. I mean, this is with an Optimus set now here, so the weapon has Optimus on the talent, and I'm running it with the gunner spec at the moment. So Optimus is like, you know it. The more you're missing on your bullets on your magazine, the higher the damage will go. So the first bullet is actually 1.5 million per second uh, for, per bullet. And then on the end of the clip, see, you can make it happen. 1.3, 1.7, yeah, 1.7 kind of-ish around there, 1.7 million per bullet, which is really cool. Combine that with a high fire rate here, and you have, a, at the moment, the best DPS set. If you can keep up the stacks, if you can keep it up, combined with fire rate, the DPS is actually really high now. You can just test it here. Let's reset that. Here you can see like the DPS number now. I think it should be hovering around like 10 to 11. 10 to 11 million per DPS. Yeah, something around that. Like 10, I would say, in average, you have 10. Which is really, really cool. And if you play this on Legendary and have like a CC guy with you, foam EMP as example, you have a really, really good time with this set here. Uh, there's another option that you can use here. Oh, by the way, uh, we run the uh, Coyote Mask here with crit chance, crit damage. Obviously, it has it. And what you would really want to do is like run a Cheska on any position kind of here. 
the glass, the knee pad, or the holster. It doesn't matter which one it is, just run one Cheska to bring the crit chance up, because Cheska gives you 10% crit chance instead of a roll, which is only 6%. And the way I have it here is like the Cheska, I have crit chance on here as well, and I'm running two times crit chance on the gear here. So I have it on the holster at the moment, and on the knees, I think. Yes, on the knees. And the other two are both crit damage. And that brings your level up to like 59% crit chance and 129 crit damage in total. And if you go close enough with the Coyote Mask, you actually gain like 25% more crit damage, uh, which is not shown in the status uh, page there, in the stats page. But you regain that uh, with the close buff. Uh, I totally not rely on something like, uh, yeah, you can go lower with the crit chance because you're running Coyote. And if you get the middle buff or the long buff, you will get like up to the crit chance that you want to. I don't rely on that because I'm actually going close to enemies anytime soon. If I can, the closer the better. And that also means like you could play this set here actually with an SMG, which is really cool. SMG shoots faster, you can build up the stacks faster. But it also means like your damage is like a little bit lower and you need to go close to the enemies because we all know like after 50 meters up to 20, SMG is spreading like crazy and it's really hard to get the damage onto the enemy and the bullet drop damage is uh, very, very short. So Assault Rifle, in my opinion, is the way to go on the Striker set at the moment. And you can play whatever Assault Rifle you want. Assault Rifle is totally personal preference. I'm loving the P416 um, because it is very accurate, it is very stable, it's easy to control. Yeah? You have a very high accuracy even on longer distances, which is really nice. I really love that. You could also run it like with an M4 if you don't have a good Assault Rifle. M4 is like a blueprint you can get from the uh, theater settlement is a project there uh, which you should have, have obtained already like way in the beginning of the game usually you have that and you can just craft an m4 over and over until you get one with damage out of cover and yeah i, I don't i think i don't need to exp have to explain that damage out of cover is the way to go on any weapon you want to have that on any dps set on any weapon you want damage out of cover and whatever comes with like the normal weapon here uh, minus rolled up to 20 percent weapon damage from the expertise system but that's not a must at all. And like I said, the other option you could do here, like the gunner has really high benefits, uh, foam nade, 10% uh, armor on kill, rate of fire for five seconds after a kill, and every third reload is faster. Uh, you have the minigun, which is really good on the striker set to shred like heavy enemies, uh, like the Chungus and a legendary mission or something. If they are really compact in one position, you can just melt them down with that here really quick because the striker buff or the RPM is also applying to the machine gun. And this thing is just like insane, then it just stretched. Um, but the other option you could do, instead of running a, a weapon here with Optimus, you can run a technician spec like this here. And then you put like flatline on here. You have uh, the mod on the weapon, it's actually the laser pointer. Yeah, so you can like pull the enemies uh, and you get the amplified damage here from the flatline, which is 15% amplified, which is really, really not bad. And then you need like one more roll, kind of, uh, anywhere here. And either you re like re-roll one of these items here to crit chance to regain that 5% that you lost from the weapon. Or you also can do like uh, just switch out one mod here. So don't re-roll your gear. Just switch out one mod from uh, crit damage to crit chance. And that will bring you up then to 54%. You could also go to 60. But in my opinion, there's a diminishing return after 55 so you don't gain like 5% more crit uh, hits, actually. Uh, you gain like one, maybe two per clip, and that is not worth the rolling from 6% crit chance instead of having another 12% crit damage for all the other bullets that are hitting for a critical already. So the damage output will be higher if you have like 54 or 55% and don't re-roll really one gear to go up to the 60% and run like another 12% crit damage instead. So this is 54 now. And the other we had 59 yeah, with the gunner spec, so I didn't re-roll anything. It's the same build here, kind of. I'm just running technician with the flat line. And now we can see like the damage numbers. Uh, let's pre-stack here a little bit. Okay, let's see how far we can go with this set here. See already the numbers there, like 1.11, uh, 1.8 million per bullet. Like 
from the get-go, it's from the first bullet to the last bullet, it's not like Optimist where the damage comes up in the end of the clip, but the DPS is kind of the same, it's a little bit higher, uh, you can like go back to the 11 million there, um, it's just a little bit higher, it only depends on like what you like more, uh, if you want to like live more on the protective side, I would actually say like run the gunner then, for the 10% uh, armor on kill, which helps a lot while you game. Um, to keep yourself alive if you don't run with a healer or something. But the technician has like also a lot of benefits. Um, you have like a second skill tier. So your shield is higher. It takes more damage. You have two charges on your reviver hive in a group. So you can revive someone, pick up your hive again. You still have one charge to revive yourself if you go down. Or revive another one in your group. Which is really cool. And also like the pulse laser here on the weapon is actually like marking the enemies if you aim at them. So everyone can see where these enemies are yeah so it's not like you don't have a benefit you just mark them and you can see them then through the walls for like 10 seconds which is really cool and also like if you have mini tanks or everything you know that mini tanks like they spin and then they blind you but you can basically if you marked them already you can basically in that white whatever that comes up there on the screen the enemy is marked and you can still see the silhouette in that white so you still know where he is and you can still kill him and, and bring him down instead of being completely blind and he just walks a little bit left or drives a little bit left as a mini tank and shreds you real quick. You know where he is and you can still shoot back, which is really cool. Um, anything I forgot here? Nah, the pistol, run whatever you want on the pistol. I run the busy little bee. It's just like, if you can, you can buff yourself up a little bit, like shoot a couple of enemies and stack the buff up. I usually forget about that, but just run it uh, or run any other pistol which, which you're happy with. Uh, you could also run the regulars here with this one, which is not a really good arm because you're missing out on the Gunslinger Holster for the damage there. But this is a really nice set to play. It's a lot of fun to play because of the high RPM. feels always great in any game, in my opinion. The higher the RPM, the better it feels for you. And you can have a lot of fun with this. So Technician, Gunner, you could also run it with a Firewall spec to go like really close. Firewall spec then I actually would play with, like, with an SMG there and run the firewall shield, put the 5% damage mod in there so you have more damage on close range and just go really close to the enemies. Uh, another option is also you can roll like something here on blue maybe even, yeah, like one or two uh, on blue to get your shield up even more on the skill tier level so it takes way more damage. Uh, I don't like that, I'm a full red player, uh, but I know people that are doing that and there's a reason behind it. It's not like, hey, I want to have some more armor uh, to stay more alive. It's actually just the blue core is just there on their rolls to buff the shield. It's not about the armor on the play itself, because any enemy in the game, you know it, comes a red enemy around the corner with a pistol, he shoots you one time and all your armor is gone, no matter how much armor you have. But that is not the reason why they rolled to blue. They rolled it for the shield. These are shield players. They have two cores on blue or even three to bring up the skill here on the shield. So it takes more damage and doesn't break so quickly. Uh, EMP nade is also really good on the technician for like mini tanks, dogs. Yeah, you can throw it on there. It's it is actually the the longest EMP or jammer that you can have on an enemy with that EMP nade instead of any other status build or whatever for the EMP. The nade lasts longer, so use it. Just keep using it. The other benefit that you have on the technician here, which is also really cool, uh, you have the in the skill tree. If you drop your hive, yeah, as example here, there's a a dog, a sniper dog in front of you, which when he explodes, he does an EMP and you can't use your shield anymore. What you can do is you kill that dog and while the, like, the health bar is low and then you kill him and he goes down on his knee to make the explodes, drop your hive. And you see that blue line now from the hive to me means I am protected from my hive. That comes from the technician skill tree here. And if I'm staying close to my hive, I don't get EMP'd, I don't get bleeding, I don't get disoriented, I don't get shocked. It removes all the status effects from you, which would be applied, so that the hive kind of takes that status effects from you, so you don't get it. And this means, like, if there's a, a sniper dog here and I kill him, and he does that EMP, I'm not EMP'd, I can just after that pick up my hive again and use my shield. And that is, like, a really, really good benefit on Legendary as well. I keep forgetting sometimes to drop the hive, but just get used to it. It's really nice to play. And instead of running just Gunner, or which Gunner is like really selfish um, when it comes for this specialization, um, Firewall is okay, people can stand behind you. Uh, you could also run the Survivalist maybe to put like the, a damage buff on them with the status effect or something. But 
in my opinion, the gunner and the technician are the way to go here if you want to. If you're an SMG player, go firewall spec and use that shield instead and go really close to the enemies. All right, I think that's it for this video. Um, nothing I missed here, I think, on the explanation. If you have any questions, put it in the comments, uh, as always. And I would say I see you on the next one. Enjoy. Bye-bye.